Week 5 of the college bowl season had some crazy outcomes that weren't expected at all, such as Pitt losing to Georgia Tech 26-21, Texas A&M getting beat the way they did by Mississippi State 42-24, and even Georgia, who was expected to crush Mizzou in Columbus, was losing most of the game until the final minutes where they pulled out the victory 26-22. However, the most unexpected outcome from Week 5 had to be OU versus TCU. People expected OU to bounce back from K-State. Instead, they looked worse, and they got absolutely destroyed and manhandled by TCU in Fort Worth, 55-24. to And it wasn't close at all. Giving up 41 points in the first half alone, while also letting up a total of 668 yards at the very end of the game, it just overall wasn't a pretty performance. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what's next for Oklahoma for the rest of the 2022 college football season. This is a team that was very intriguing and interesting to keep up with during the 2022 college football offseason, as they had a lot of new faces coming in with a whole new coaching staff, new players, and had, of course, Lincoln Riley leave them for USC, that entire storyline. But overall, this was a team that was going to be fun to keep up with in 2022, and these past couple weeks have just been brutal for the Sooners, and I'm going to be talking about their 2022 season and what's possibly next for them for the rest of the year. Before I move on, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to be talking about in today's video is OU in their first three games. To start off 2022, OU was seen as a top 10 team at number 9 in the AP preseason poll. Their first three games, they played UTEP, Kent State, and Nebraska. All three games they were expected and favored to win, as none of those teams are necessarily the strongest opponents, the best one being Nebraska, as it was in Lincoln. In those three games, the Sooners started off 3-0. They were scoring at a high rate, averaging 42.3 points a game. The defense was barely allowing anything, only allowing three touchdowns in total in the first three games, two with Nebraska and one to UTEP. They were allowing 10 points per game, the offense averaged 500 yards per game, and the defense was only allowing 312, and a lot of them came in garbage time. And yes, those first three opponents aren't necessarily the best opponents, and won't exactly tell 100% how your team is for the rest of the season, but in those three games, the Sooners, they looked pretty good. The offense was fast-paced, they were scoring a lot and putting up a lot of yards, and the defense, more importantly, looks like they got a lot better overall in just schemes, tackling, and being more physical overall from the last season to 2022. Now, on to the last two games OU has played, as they played Kansas State at home and most recently TCU on the road. Let's talk about these two games together. Well, they started off 0-2 in conference play. The offense is averaging 29 points a game while the defense is allowing 48 points per game and have already given up 13 touchdowns in two games played. The offense is actually averaging 452 yards and a half per game, most of them really coming against Kansas State in garbage time versus TCU. However, the defense, yeah, 585 and a half yards per game allowed is not going to cut it anywhere. Versus K-State, the defense was not good at all. They couldn't stop Adrian Martinez on the ground. Everyone knows it's hard to stop Deuce Vaughn, and Deuce Vaughn's always going to eat no matter what. And Adrian Martinez, the, key, the game plan to really stop Adrian Martinez is to limit him on the ground and try to have him beat you in the air since he's not the best throwing quarterback. But something that he's the best with is on the ground, and OU had no answer for him as Adrian Martinez quite literally looked like Lamar Jackson versus OU. And with the TCU game, I've already mentioned some of the numbers earlier in the video in the beginning. Let's just say it was a lot uglier and there was a lot more busted plays than there were in the K-State game, hence why TCU had 41 points in the first half and already had 500 plus yards of total offense in the first half alone ending up with 686 total yards by the end of the game. Unfortunately, during the first half of the TCU game, 
Dylan Gabriel was going down for a slide while he was hit late by a TCU defender, ultimately knocking him out and giving him a bad concussion. Now going into week six, their biggest game of the season potentially versus Texas, the Red River rivalry, he could potentially be out and that could be bad for the Oklahoma Sooners. And although Dylan Gabriel wasn't necessarily having his best game versus TCU, missing a lot of passes that were overthrown after he left the game, the offense for the Sooners was pretty much stagnant for the rest of the game, as that can concern a lot of Sooner fans out there, as they're about to face Texas, their biggest rivals in every sport that they play in, especially football, and this is a game that you're going to have to score points in. If Dylan Gabriel, in fact, cannot play versus Texas because of the concussion that he sustained versus TCU, here are some options that they could go with. The first option being second string quarterback Davis Bevel. Now, Bevel came in versus TCU when Gabriel went down with his concussion. Davis Bevel didn't necessarily play the best either. He was 7 of 16, threw for 50 yards, and even had a QBR of 4, which is not good at all. The next option being Tyler Junior College transfer, General Booty, who is currently the third string quarterback on the depth chart behind Gabriel and Bevel. Now, General Booty was a top quarterback in the JUCO level in 2021. However, he has yet to attempt a pass in 2022 for the Sooners. The last possible option that I could see is the true freshman quarterback from the 22 class, four-star top quarterback, Nick Evers. Now, Nick Evers is probably the most popular option amongst some of the fans right now when talking about the potential three that I mentioned that could play against Texas. However, I think he has the least likely chance of actually starting and playing against the Longhorns, as I'm pretty sure he's supposed to redshirt and he's yet to play in a single game or take in a single snap. To close this video out, I'm going to be talking about what's next for OU for the rest of the 2022 season. The rest of their schedule, it's not easy at all as the Big 12 this season is very competitive up and down, as we can see that happening right now as Kansas, a team that was expected to finish last, is now a top 25 team and 5-0. and The rest of their schedule for 2022, they have to play Texas, Kansas, Iowa State, Baylor, West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and Texas Tech. And none of those games look like they're going to be for sure wins for OU if they keep up the way that they're playing right now. However, I don't believe they're going to finish 3-9. I feel like they will figure it out at some point. But these past two games, with how they started 3-0 and now they're 3-2, it tells you that this rebuilding process that they have with this new staff and a lot of new players isn't going to just be a seamless transition into a top five team in the nation. It's going to take time. And some people are suggesting that they need to make the defense more vanilla. However, I feel like that's only going to make them go backwards even more. It could make their record even better. But when talking about in the future, you need to keep running those complex defenses even if you fail. Yes, you can improve on the times that you fail. But you're ultimately preparing for the future in year one as well. And you've already lost two games. You might as well try to change the scheme some but keep improving keeping some stuff and making it to your strengths but at the same time not just making everything a very simple defense as that's not going to help you at all in 2023 well guys you've made this far in the video drop something down in the comment section below how do you think the Sooners are going to respond after their two losses to K-State and TCU and what do you think their record's going to end up being at the end of the 2022 regular season? And before you head out, remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. Be Kelly out.